Mode. During the mid-90s, as the world was being revolutionized by cellular technology, pilots and their crews began to experience, please put this in your notes, communication problems. They began to experience communication problems during the flights. Passengers aboard their planes were using cell phones to communicate with those on the ground and these devices caused pilots and air traffic control workers to hear an audible click whenever a device would send or receive a signal in their headphones. One New York Times article quotes one pilot as saying, I've never been that distracted on a flight in my life. To prevent the issue from getting worse, airlines banned the usage of cellular devices during flights. Basically, seven people are going to receive this. They were telling everybody on board, if you want to fly high, you can't talk low. I'm going to say that again. If you want to fly high, you can't talk low. And as I pause and parenthetically digress, the problem that many of us are facing, be it knowingly or unknowingly, is the fact that the higher God keeps trying to take you, the lower your conversations keep going. I'm going to say this, and for three people going to receive this, some people you cannot afford to talk to, not because they're not equal to who you are, but the height at which God has you is interfering with the level of communication God is trying to give you on that level. Somebody say traffic. You got to say it like you mean it. Say traffic. Isn't it interesting that although I am not on the ground, uh-oh, although I am not on the ground, whenever I try to ascend, there are distractions. So what you just heard is the equivalent to what pilots would hear in the air. They would be in the air and they would hear air breaker, air breaker, traffic control, you're clear to take. So the pilots would be delayed in their response because while they were trying to get communication or information that was needed for their level, they were being blocked. Here it is. Because people on the plane were trying to communicate with people who couldn't even get them where they were trying to go. Michael, there were two levels of conversations taking place on the plane. You had the pilot and the passenger. Michael, pilot, somebody put that in the comments. Passenger, uh-oh, pilot, mm, passenger. And the first thing many of you need to discover in your relationships that you have right now is who's the pilot and who's the passenger. And the reason some of y'all keep being delayed and crashing is because you got passengers trying to do too much and you got pilots who won't do enough. The pilot is talking to, listen to this, air traffic controller, Michael, which means while he's in the air, there's somebody on the ground, okay? I didn't plan this, but I feel it in my spirit. Dre, if you're listening, you should have a microphone somewhere by you, Dre. If, if you're listening, I just need you to talk back to me because I'm trying to make sure we go to another level, Dre. So I, I know we didn't plan this, but, but I need your help, Dre. I, I just, yes, uh, 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 yes, uh, pass, pass the mic, join you to air traffic controller. Dre? Yes, sir. Uh, are we clear to take off? We are clear to take off. Are we clear to take off? This should be an hour long message today. Uh, uh, so am I clear to just speak what God is telling me to speak? Now, I want to be very clear. The only person who's supposed to be speaking is the person who can see the full scope of the journey. See, Dre is sitting in the back. And right now, Dre is looking at every screen, every online, every volume, every message, the notes that's going to hit the top of that screen. How is all of this going to come together? If I listen to anybody other than the one who's on the throne, I'm sorry. If I listen to anybody other than the one who's on, if, if, if I listen, do you see how frustrating that is? This is why when you go to pray, you instantly get distracted. It's because you have people on your team who aren't communicating at the level that you desire to communicate with. I need all of the pilots to send a message to everybody in your circle. 
from this moment on where I'm headed is too big for you to block what God is getting ready to do. I need all y'all to go to airplane mode. I need somebody just look at your neighbor and say, he may not be preaching to you, but he's preaching to me. If I don't call you back this week, I'm in airplane mode. If I don't come around this week, I'm in airplane mode. You acting funny. I'm not acting funny. I'm in airplane mode. Oh, so you ain't going to go back and forth with me? I can't go back and forth with you. Because when you in airplane mode, you don't even get half the messages that used to be. I am on another level. Millions didn't make it, but I'm going to be one of the ones who did. Somebody jump up, sit down, and shout back to the one. But it requires you to go to airplane mode. So put this in your notes. Airplane mode, airplane mode, let's talk about this, is the process of eliminating distractions so that you can reach your destination. Ooh, I'm going in airplane mode. It is the process of eliminating distractions so that you can reach why Pastor Mike? Okay, 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 okay. Elevation requires separation. You wanna know what's so 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 a trip to me? Because I fly a lot, right? So I get on the plane and, and the nurse out I'm sorry, the, the um steward is always come by and say, make sure your phone's in airplane mode. All right. And I don't even do it. <laughs> Who gonna testify today? Who? You don't even do it. You be like, okay, and don't even do it. You know what's crazy? But your phone still don't work. Your disobedience doesn't override God's commands. Michael, you leave your phone on as if it's still going to work. The only time your phone works is when you pay for Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. And, and when you pay for the Wi-Fi, here's what's crazy. You have to have internet in order to pay for it. Y'all never thought about that. This hit me the other day. You're on the plane and it goes up and they say you can use the Wi-Fi. You click the Wi-Fi, but it takes you to a web browser, which means you have internet. What does the airline do that I see a principle that God does? He gives you just enough to decide if you want to connect long enough to get what you really want. Many of you got the little bit and then ran off when God was saying, if you were happy over this, can you imagine what I was trying to give you had you really connected consecration sometimes elevation is required for separation this is the biblical principle that we refer to as consecration put this in your notes somebody help me online here it is consecration is the practice of setting apart a person to God and for his purpose consecration is the practice of setting apart a person Set, listen to what I'm saying, setting apart a person, taking you out of the crowd, putting you in sometimes isolation to God and for his purpose. Consecration is when he removes you from your comfort zone, places you in an uncomfortable atmosphere because uncomfortable atmospheres can burst something comfort can't. <laughs> All right, let me put it like this. Comfort talks about change. Uncomfortable makes change happen. Six of y'all are where you are, not because of comfort, but because of uncomfort. Me, me, we, we got, me and lady was talking the other day, and I told her, I, I said, no, nah, the moment the boys turn a certain age, they either go to Chick-fil-A, Walmart, Publix, they're going to find a job somewhere. She's like, you ain't, you ain't have to do something. I said, but they don't have the struggle I had. So, so the struggle I had produced something in me. They have comfort. Their life can't be a life of comfort. Because if I raise three young men on comfort, they will be entitled as men. So, so watch this. So, so watch this. As a daddy, I'm put in a peculiar position. 
because I got to give them enough success and enough failure. I got to give them enough love, but also enough pain because the balance that they're going to need to be successful without me won't be found in comfort. Okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. If an egg is broken from the outside, life is ended. If it's broken from the inside, life begins. I'm going to say it again. Look at a little chiclet. If an egg is broken from the outside, his life is ended. But if the egg is broken from the inside, his life begins. So since you got to break, break your... St- Real transformation does not happen from the outside in. It happens from the inside out. And sometimes God can't spark that transformation when you're surrounded by people who are blocking the communication. So what does he do? He consecrates you. He consecrates you. I I, I wanna talk about this because what I'm asking of you this week is not necessarily for God to consecrate you, Deanna. I'm, 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 I'm more so telling you, consecrate yourself. So, so, bro, what does that mean? Consecrate yourself. Put this in your notes. To consecrate yourself means to officially promise to give one's time and attention to something. Watch this. Especially religious, spiritual. They consecrated themselves. This is crazy. To the church. Now, now, now here, here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. Because what I'm telling you is... Why wait for God to pull you out when you can walk out? (laughs) That was heavy and you missed it. Why wait for God to pull you out when you can just walk out? You know, the story of Noah always messed me up because Noah knows he's going in the wrong direction. The Bible says a storm breaks loose and everybody on the boat is throwing their stuff overboard. The whole boat losing because of one person on their boat. Here's what's crazy and it always messed me up. Why didn't Noah just jump off the boat? Even when they found out he was the problem, he said, if you want to stop the storm, throw me over. Look at the mindset. He says, if y'all want the storm to stop throw me overboard. Why not say, hey, y'all, I apologize for what I caused. I'm going to jump off. Because it's hard to rebuke you. And the transformation many of us need, God is saying, no, 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 no. You decide. And I don't know who I'm speaking to in this room and online today, be it digital or physical. I need you to hear your pastor when I say this. There are certain decisions you will make in the next 60, 90 days that God says, I could easily provide a way of escape for that, but there's the exit. You decide. Hmm. Some of you right now, your frustration is you've been praying and praying for God to do something that he gave you the authority to do. If Miles screams my name, my five-year-old, if Miles screams my name and says, Dad, Dad, help me put my pants on, I'm going to run in there and say, all right, come on now, I'm going to help you this time, but you got to figure it out. But because he's my baby boy, my affinity, because he's my baby boy, my affinity, because he's a baby S, my affinity to help him will be stronger. Lo and behold, if Xander, my 15-year-old, screamed my name and said, Dad, help me put my pants on, we may fight. Why PMJ? He's mature. He's not asking me to help him put his pants on because he's inadequate. He's asking me to put his pants on because he's lazy, because he's sorry, because he's spoiled, because he just feels like if he don't want to do it, he ain't got sound like some of y'all, don't it? Sound like some of y'all, don't it? Then no, no, no. Well, I'm gonna go to the altar and let them pray for me. Sometimes pray for yourself. 
No, no, I'm not one of those pastors who have a God complex. Most pastors, spiritual leaders, most leaders in general have a God complex. That means they want to be everything to everybody they lead. They are offended when anybody gets love, honor, and respect other than them. I do not possess a God complex because I am not trying to raise a generation of slaves. I am trying to raise a generation of kings and queens who will have the boldness to take authority and dominion over their own situation. That if they never have a prayer partner, they bold enough to lay hands on their own head. I felt God right there. Look at somebody and tell them you're sitting next to a king or a queen and don't even know it. If you knew half the hell I had to pick myself out of. If you knew half the trouble I had to pray myself out of. I'm not preaching to everybody. Only three of y'all who if you didn't pray for you, you're not sure who would be praying for you. But I am at a place where I realize that some things... God won't do for me, I'm going to have to do. So, so hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Am I doing okay? Yes. Consecrate yourself. It's crazy, right? Consecrate yourself. Consecrate yourself. Put, put that definition on the screen. Make a promise to you. All right, all right. If you're watching online, you should have a cell phone or something by you. If you're in the room, pull your cell phone out, go to your notes. I, I want you to do me a favor. I don't even want you to think about it. I want you to just move instinctly. Spirit going to tell you what to list. I want you to list a couple things this week you got to pull you out of. Yeah, just this week. I got this week. I'm giving, I'm making a promise to me. I got to pull out of this. Hey, y'all, I'm going to silence this group text this week. I got to pull me out of that. I got this place. This week, Michael. This week, I have to consecrate myself. Now, I need you to catch this because consecration is also for a position or action. Now, here's what's crazy. I need you to hear me when I say this. Say I was getting ready to be ordained a bishop, okay, a bishop. They would consecrate me for that office because consecration is not just being pulled out of something. It's always putting, putting you in a position for something, which lets me know when we look at the life of Jesus, his life was consecrated for his mission, which means, this is real heavy, consecration can be active or idle. Michael. And the problem I have is in church, we only teach consecration from an idle mindset. Make that make sense. God pulled you and set you apart from them, and he put you over here because he's getting ready to do something. You feel what I'm saying? So whenever we hear consecration in church, here's what we hear. You were in a group of people, and God plucked you out of that group. But he placed you in isolation, and you were just there while he was doing a work in you. But I feel that in this season, there's another level of consecration that God is desiring to do through us that is active. God is saying, I'm not pulling you out to put you on a shelf. I am pulling you out to put you to work. Michael, 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 Michael. No, 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 no. I'm not going to waste the last levels of hell you went through. I'm not going to waste the last couple of lessons that you learned. I am not pulling you out of that circle, then putting you in a room by yourself for six months. No, you've already been quarantined. No, no, no. Now, I put something in you during 2020 and 2021. You came out of it and was so eager to go back outside that you rushed back to what you used to do. But what the devil didn't realize is he thought he killed it. It was a seed. And at the right time, Michael, it's about to bloom and give forth. God said for some of you, your recent irritation and aggravation has not been with your money. It has not been with your relationship. It has not been with your job. The root of your recent irritation and aggravation has been founded in the place that you know there's more in you than you're doing right now. So it ain't even a fact of the money because the truth of the matter is you talking about walking off a job that's paying you good to go do something that you don't even have a clue if you're going to pay your bills for. It ain't the... Negro, it's not the money that I'm after. It's the freedom. It's the peace. It's the boldness. It's the joy. It's the favor. And I know in this season, I got to consecrate myself. Am I preaching to anybody? That's why people don't understand you. Because when they look at you, they like, you making more money than you ever made. You look better than you ever look. You're driving some nice. And they don't realize stuff. Don't make me position 
don't make me awards don't make me this one thing I will be confident in that he who has begun a good work I want my work to be hear me Jay he's not pulling you out to put you on a shelf listen to me he says if you would do the if you would be bold enough to consecrate you I'm going to equip you in the consecrated Michael okay 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 I never read this much I want to read this much because I don't want to mess it up okay listen to me Jesus's consecration was centered on action doing his father's will working his work we read in John 4 34 Jesus said unto them my meat meat is substance is to do the will of him that sent me and finish his work his was not a passive Consecration. Put that in your notes if you're taking notes. He, Jesus did not have a passive consecration in which he said idly by and waited for the Father to do all the work. It also was not merely a statement of faith or an attitude of confessing faith without works. It was not lip service. It was not a vague, far-off desire to do something at some distant time in the future. He said, no, Jesus' work was not passive. Well, I'm going to sit back and say, God, when you're ready, will you stop lying to you? Okay, okay, I'm going to free you. I'm going to free you. I need you to be real, real, okay? Real, real. And we all going to be embarrassed, but don't leave me by myself. If I'm talking to you, you're going to stand and get laughed at like everybody else, okay? I want you to be bold in your confession today. Who know you need to lose weight? Okay, okay, there, there it is. Okay, there it is. Okay, sit back down. Sit back down. Sit, okay, okay, watch this. Who know you need to lose weight? And around Wednesday, you said, you know what? I'm finna, I'm finna get this weight up off me. But then you said, I'm gonna start. No, I'm, I'm finna drop this weight. I'm gonna get this weight off me, but you know what? I don't wanna start on a Thursday, cause that's gonna throw everything off. And you know, Friday is my cheat day. How you got a cheat day when you got a cheat life? So then you tell yourself what? I'm gonna start when? Monday. And then what happened on Monday? Somebody call and say, you know we're going to pop it up. What? What? We're going to go to American Deli. What you want? Ten piece, lemon pepper wet. Ranch fries, all flats. Like the flats ain't as fat as the other stuff. So, and I need a kiki poo. Because if you always wait until Monday, Monday ain't going to never come. And that's what's wrong with your mission with God. You keep saying, well, I'm going to witness to people when I get deeper in my word. I'm going to give when I start making more. I'm going to come to church when I get some stuff together. Stop saying tomorrow. Do it now. Somebody ought to shout, he's preaching to me today. God is not calling you to a passive, a passive consecration. Both of y'all going to high school this year, okay? Both of y'all going to high school this year, and, and I've been praying so hard over my babies. Y'all know I love my three top boy. I love these boy. I've been praying over you, but y'all are now in a world that daddy can't protect you from no more. Can't protect you from it. At, at middle school, everybody, we can come up there. High school now, it, it, the rule's different. Let me show you about they school, all right? We were at the orientation this week, and the principal said, I want to give y'all some, some changes that you might notice from middle school to high school. Well, in high school, you can't check your child out when you want to. I was like, whoa, what, what, what you mean? He said, no. He says, we're not going to come over to intercom and interrupt everybody's learning to say, well, can Michael come to the office? They said, learn your child's schedule. And if you're going to check him out, either come in between his first break or the second break. Now, the hood in me is <laughs> like, now, what y'all not going to tell me what to do over this mountain is when I can and can't come get my child. But what they were trying to show me was, we not finna interrupt everybody's learning. Cause you gotta come get yours. And some of y'all, that's why you never grow. Cause every time God talking, one of your friends come, hey, we going out this week, come over to intercom. What y'all doing this weekend? 
Every time you say you're getting ready to go to church, well, we was doing brunch over the intercom. And what I'm trying to get you to realize is your consecration is not this passive, I'm just waiting on God. Hear me, hear me, hear me. When I tell you the series I'm going to hit this fall, going to be very controversial. When I talk about the problems with the church, when I talk about systemic oppression found in Christianity, on how Christianity did not a, is not a European religion. No, it's not. How that picture that was in grandma's living room is not Jesus. When we start talking about that, at the same time, this, this idea that he was solely black is inaccurate. When he says hair like wool, feet like brass, that's what they teach in scholar apocalyptic poetic imagery. So it was end time poetry where they were given a description. So I'm going to sit down and talk about all this stuff and talk about everything we talk about, how there were fallen angels and how this is taking place because I'm realizing there is a sneak attack happening via social on this generation. So I can't have a passive consecration. If you're going to stay on the sideline for another six months, who in your life is going to be a casualty of your passivity? Michael, who's going to be a casualty of your passivity? Shannon, one of the most popular dudes on UAB campus. Everybody knew Shannon. At what point does he say, if God did not give me popularity, watch this, or influence, popularity is what I can get from you. Influence is what I can get to you. So how long do I sit and say, well, I'm going to just wait. How long? And I ask you the question that was posed to them brothers who was at the gate. How long will we sit here and die? You know it's something in you. You know it's purpose in you. You know there's a testimony in you. Every morning, a thousand people log on to devotion. I wonder who would be better if you came in. Well, you know, I'm going to get on that one day, but right now I'm towed up. No, we need you in that phase. <laughs> no, I, I need somebody on devotion to say, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Well, I'm not as deep as Pastor Hollis and Pastor Darius them. I got high yesterday, so y'all pray for me. I think I'm a little bit high right now. Uh, I, and I think we're going out tonight. I'm on here because, look, God ain't through with me yet. And we're going to be in the back of the house like, hey, get them off, get them off, quick, 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 quick. Get them off, get them off, get them off, quick, quick, quick. But then somebody going to be in the comments like, period. <laughs> because if you can't see you. See, that's the problem with church. We, 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 we. Oh, God, help me, Michael. Help me. Help me, God. Help me, Holy Spirit. We, we, we. See, the problem with the church is the only time the church consecrated was when we were trying to hide something. So, the, so by definition, it was a comfort consecration, but by methodology, it was isolation. If somebody was too real, hide that. Because the church was more concerned with discretion over deliverance. Michael. I'm talking heavy today. So, no, we didn't need you healed or whole. We just needed you to hide it long enough to finish this song so we could have good church. Yeah. Michael. So, Jesus' consecration was not a vague, far-off desire. His consecration built on taking, put this in your notes if you don't mind for your pastor. It's very simple. Immediate action. Immediate action. Immediate action. I'm getting saved today. <laughs> Somebody just need to go ahead and make him know I'm getting saved today. I'm getting saved today. I ain't saying I'm going to be perfect when I leave here. But I know something in my spirit saying today I need to do something. To kind of show God, you know what? Watch this. Although my body not right, my heart is in the right place. You call that? that, that that's what I'm choosing to be. It, it, is, it is not this far off idea, this far off idea that, that I got to wait. Well, you know, when I get daddy age, I'll do so-and-so. If something was to happen to either one of y'all today, 
You can't get to the gate and say, well, you know, my daddy was Pastor Mike. Can't do that. You can't do that. Because truth of the matter is you don't know if your daddy going to be there. You, you got to have your own relationship with God. That's for all my young people. You, you can't say, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Young people, schools get ready to start back in, and I come against any school shoes, any school violence, any school riots. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of our baby schools. But history has told us that you don't have to be old to die. And we never talk about it. Mama, when that fire happened, I'm positive you didn't wake up that morning saying, you know what, I want my whole family to almost be burned in a fire. No, life started happening. And you look up, now your son, on, then you look up and it's boom, and now you're trying to figure out, and what happens after that, it makes you realize no man knows the day nor the hour. You're going to die letting everybody use you but God? No. That's why we got to get back to the one. That's why I'm choosing the weekend after arguably. Once this stuff air on BET, I, you, just, you, you already know it's, it's yeah. You know what I'm telling them? Nah. That next weekend, you know what I'm going to be? At the Bowel Auditorium, on my face before God. Watch this. With the people I love the most. Not in L.A. trying to make connections. Not in Chi-Town trying to be bigger than I am. No. I want to show God. Hey, God, I'm still growing. But if you don't mind, my heart is in the right place. Hey, hear me. Am I helping anybody? Listen to this. Although the most important specific work of Jesus' ministry was providing the ransom price. That should have told If this was Grandmama Church, he would have took out running. The ransom price. That's what he did for you on the cross. He paid the ransom. You and I were being held hostage. The price, there was no blood pure enough to pay the cost. Jesus paid the price. It's a ransom. That is Jesus. A ransom price. Watch this. There was a much other work which he also engaged in, speaking the words of truth and doctrine, being perfect example of character, engaging in services to others, performing of miracles, and much more. For us, as with Jesus, our consecration involves work and activity. So listen to your pastor right here. We're going to be a dope church, cold-blooded church. We're going to be a fly church. We're going to be a young, active church. We're going to be a seasoned church. We're going to be able to go from, from Maverick City to Hymns, all the way back to Kurt Franklin, back to, back to what we do. Hear me when I say this, but never forget, listen to me, our consecration involves work and activity with particular emphasis on the thought that there is a work to be done today. As the Apostle James says, listen to this, I'm in James 1, 22 and 25, put it on the screen, but don't listen to God's word, I'm going to say it again, but don't just listen, I like giving you different translations, grandmama taught you, don't be just hearers of the word, but doers, I like the NLT translation, it breaks it down a little better, look at what it says, but don't just listen to God's word, let's pause, don't just come to Sunday, don't just log on. I was teaching my boys, and a lot of what I preach over the next six months is going to be to y'all, but through them. Is that okay? That, that's how I live. So I was teaching my boys, both of them playing ball now, and, and I was telling Mason, I was like, Mason, um, you're not going to be better than them because you do what they do at practice. No, you're going to be better because of what you do off the clock. So, because so, hear me, when you get home, before you go to bed, get some sit-ups in. Get some push-ups in. Don't just be a hearer. Be a doer. So I want to ask you a question. You really think <laughs> a 40-minute message, how many hours in a day? Okay, don't, don't embarrass yourself. What's 24, what's 24 times 7? 6. 24 times 6. What's that? We slow. Jeez, I'm a little embarrassed. How much? It, that's 144 hours? All right, so, so, so that means every week we got 
100, every six days, we got 144 hours. All right, can you subtract one hour from that? Huh? All right, 143. All right, I want to show you something. So in six days, you get 144. You sit in church for one of them, for the word, which leaves 143. When I was in high school and I loved somebody, we couldn't text them. We had to page them. And I know y'all too young to know this, but somebody old gonna catch this, and I'm paging you. One, four, three. Oh my God! Some of y'all don't understand that because y'all can text each other, y'all can do selfies. Back then we had pagers or beepers. We could say hello, and if you turn your beeper upside down, who I'm talking to in here? So watch this, so watch this. So for us, we had to speak in code. And love was one, four. How much do you love you is determined by how you spend your 143, your 143. Don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Look at the scriptures on the screen. Otherwise, you are only... Y'all don't like me today. You are just fooling yourself. Watch this. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, you walk away, and you forget what you look like. Whoever been rushing, then once you got to come... That's how your life is. You get a word rushing. And let me free you real quickly. The devil ain't scared of your Facebook quotes. I saw, I saw something on TikTok when it was like, uh, when you get to heaven, and it was like, show, the, show God all the stuff you had, and he was, God was laughing. That's how some of us going to be. Like, you can't quote inspiration and think you're going to have dominion over a spiritual enemy. The devil's in a distraction, and he's telling us, come on, you're going to stay focused. And the devil, like, hey, what they said, the demon's like, <coughs> stay focused. And the devil, like, that's it. Y'all come back. Just send two of them. Y'all, y'all good. They're <laughs> they going to hurt themselves. Don't, let's, let's not even waste our, our resources on them quoting posts. No. You're going to need word. I'm going to do that for you this week too. I'm going to do that for you this week. By the end of this week, I'm going to send a link out that's going to have a scripture for every feeling you could possibly feel. That's what we're going to do this week too. That's what we're going to do. We're going to be the no excuse church. No excuse. Leslie, try to have that by the end of the night. Right there. Just a link. Boom. And that way, all you got to do is just look. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there, if I'm not mistaken, it's already in my notes somewhere that when you're feeling lonely, Scripture. Overwhelmed, Scripture. Hear me when I say this. Even if you don't know it by heart, you got to be able to reach for it. I'm going I'm, to I'm stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. You see yourself and you walk away and you forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Joshua 3, 5, NIV version. Joshua told the people what? Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do that can tear church up. Consecrate yourself, Michael. Consecrate yourself, for tomorrow mm, the Lord will do amazing things among you. That should have told the whole church up. Because I stand before you in a certain way that Joshua stood before his people. And I say to those who follow me, and whenever I say my people, I'm not saying that possessively. I'm saying that protectively. So I look at you the way, same way Joshua looked at the children of Israel, and I tell you, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things, watch this, among you. You want to know why you should get excited? Joshua said he's going to do some amazing stuff among you. I don't know which one the among is, but if I'm in the number, Michael, 
Joshua was, in, was instructing the people to prepare themselves to experience God and be used by him. And I'm telling you right now, no matter where you find yourself in this walk of life, get ready to see God do something among you. Hear me? And, 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 and don't fall into this trick or this trap that it has to be this big public praise that comes with it. That if, I, if I'm not standing on this stage, it's not relevant. You know what I mean? That, that, that if I'm not, if, if, if I'm not, I, I had a crazy inbox the other day. Uh, this guy did a drum cover to one of my songs, and he was doing a drum cover, and he said, man, man I, I know you got professional drummers and uh, all these people playing for you, yada, yada, yada. Man, if I could just talk to your drummer one day. And in my head, it's Daniel. But in his eyes, it's Daniel. Y'all missed that. It's called tonation. It's called ton tonation determines value. Daniel? Daniel, Daniel, did you catch that? Daniel, you good? You good? You good? Many of you are wrestling with anxiety because of your own tonation. You're saying the right thing, but you're saying it with the wrong spirit. God got me. God got me. Oh, God got me. And, and what I'm trying to get you to realize now is this is why I'm so passionate about being back to the one. This is why I rather cancel, and many of y'all who've ever been to the Madness know, that one of the biggest events in the city every year. For now, what may be a couple of us praying in a huge arena, because I'm realizing if we don't ground ourselves... And I'm doing something. It's not even open to the public. It's not open to the public. You've got to register. I'm not going to let you in. You want to know why? Because to register is a, is, a, is, a, is a sign that this means something to you. You feel me? Even if you're in the room, you say, no, Pastor, I just want to come pray one day. Register. Even if you're going to come and just sit in the room and just find your corner and just go, God, I just want to talk to God. Re hear me when I say this. This is why my heart is like, no, nah, this is a trick. This is a trick. No, this, 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 no. No, he, the devil trying to, trying to get us comfortable. He's trying to get us to believe in us a little too much. That, I see this now. Yeah. That, that's what, it, I, 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 I can see it. See, I don't have prophetic foresight. I have, my gift is prophetic insight. God places me in, anything that God places me in, he's giving me this sixth sense to be able to break it apart, see the whole thing, and then un, learn how to operate in it. But because I have prophetic insight, it gives me foresight. And as I sit in this moment and I'm looking at world games and things changing and construction happening all over the city and real estate prices going through the roof, gas prices going through the roof, all these different things happen, political climates changing and all these accolades coming, Holy Spirit like, you see that? I'm like, yeah, God. What you going to do? I'm going to sit. Be still and know that I am God. Now, listen to your boy. Listen to your boy. Because I'm not, I, listen to your boy. Listen to your boy. I think critically. Y'all ready for this? Somebody say storms. Why do you think storms are bad? They tear stuff up. They're inconvenient. Can I free you real quickly? What if the storm is stuff you like? Pastor Mike, you're not making sense. Okay, I want, I want to free you. I want to free you. I want to free you. It was raining the other day. Raining the other day. My yard man says, Pastor, Pastor Mike, good day today, right? I was like, nah, we was going to go outside and throw the ball a little bit, uh, but it's cutting up out there. He was like, yeah, yeah, going to be real good for the plants we planted. So what was an inconvenience to me was necessary for something else. And many of us right now, if we don't open our spiritual eyes and really see what's happening by the time we realize it, it's going to be too late. I got to get you out of here. I'm boring y'all today. So how do we do this, Pastor Mike? Growing your faith is an ongoing project. 
It's an ongoing project. Now, hear me. This weekend is back to the one. It's Friday and Saturday. I want Sunday. I need everybody to meet me at the Boutwell Auditorium. We're going to do church at the Boutwell. And it's going to be an overflow from back to the one. It's going to be a very spiritual day. I feel it in my spirit. So next Sunday, don't come here. If you're watching online, join us at the Boutwell next Sunday at 11 a.m. Friday and Saturday, we're consecrating ourselves. Friday and Saturday, we're consecrating ourselves. Friday night, 7 p.m., we're going into intense worship prayer. I'm going to be praying and laying hands. We're going to be praying all over the room. Saturday morning, we will have a moment, a time of intercession at 7 a.m. Some of us are walking. There's a 5K walk that we're going to be doing that I would invite everybody to walk with. Some of our friends, Toya Johnson and different, different um, and Red, they're coming down. And I'm going to send some information about that Saturday night. We're going to be in more prayer, intercession, intense praying the laying of the hands that's something that that's something that God convicted your pastor on he said Mike you don't lay hands enough you don't lay hands that's important and that 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 means something to me the first Monday of every month I'm about to start making sure everybody who works at the church gets in a single file line I'm going to lay hands on Father God in Jesus name I cover them in prayer yada 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 that that's that's spiritual that's one of the things the pandemic took our ability to physically touch and agree. So hear me when I say this. So what do we need? I'm finna go really, really fast, really, really fast. Hear me when I say this. In other words, man is walking around thinking he's good enough when the only reason I am good is because God made me righteous. I want to talk about this. If you're going to have faith, faith is like a seed and faith must grow. Somebody say faith. Look at Romans 1 and 17. The good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by what? Faith. Faith. Here are seven things that make your faith grow, and I'm going to go really fast. Number one, feed your faith through the Word. Normally, I would have stopped right there, but I need to get all of this to you today. You can go back home tonight, rewatch it, take really, really good notes. Number one, feed your faith through the Word. How else will I know the will of God if I'm not in His Word? You can't get on the field if you don't know the playbook. You can't get out of training if you don't know the rules. So how are you trying to walk in the level of favor you claim and it won't even get in the manual? Michael, read your Bible. Begin doing what it says and you will have growth spurts in your faith. Now I'm going to say something that may not even make sense, but to me it's so simple. Do what the Bible says even when you don't understand it. If I tell him to get up, hey, make sure y'all clean up your room before you go to school. They can easily say, well, wow, I'm coming back. I'm going to just get right back in the bed. No, it's because I said so. No, it's, it's because I said, make the bed up, or by the time you get home, it won't be a bed. <laughs> I'm that petty. Make the bed up, or by the time you get home, I'm going to be incrementally, there won't be no sheets or covers on it, just a mattress. Then lay hands on your mattress. I need to see you do this over mattress. Don't do that, then I'm taking the mattress. You're going to have box spring. Your spiritual walk ain't a negotiation. I tell you what, God, here go the Ten Commandments. I tell you, I tell you, I'm going to do six of them. How, how, I'm going to do six. You're going to bless the family and the money. I may catch a little hell in the friends. Is that cool? And God is like, no, nah, it's, it's, it's all or nothing. I need the whole ten. I know you ain't going to get them all right. But I need you to at least be pursuing. What are the benefits of reading the Bible? First, you get to know God's character. Number two, number two, I don't have time. It's profitable. I want to read this to you, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. If you ever want to be blessed, go read all three 16s. It'll bless your life, okay? All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us what to do right. God used it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. Third, regularly reading God's Word re reorients us with our thinking. That when your mind gets weak, you got something to pull on. Number two, number two, exercise your faith. How do I exercise my faith? By my actions. By my actions. Seven keys to exercising your faith. You ready? Number one, first, what you do in life will be a reflection of what you learned. I'm going fast. What you do in life will be a reflection of what you have learned. Number two, our greatest desire should be for our deeds to reflect his instructions. Devo energy this week. Let's deal with these seven right here, okay? Number three, 
Faith must be in action or it will be inactive. Faith without works is dead. How do I know my faith is inactive? Because you don't put it to the test. If you constantly secure in every area of your life, you're telling, I don't, I ain't, I ain't out here on faith on nothing. I look for moments to trust God. Ah, oh, that got me. Fourth, faith is a team effort. What's the team, PMJ? Faith, belief, and action go together. If you remove either one of them from the team, you lose. Faith, belief, action. Number five, you will be rewarded for the actions you take and consequences when you don't. I'm in Starbucks line the other day. I love getting a strawberry venti refresher, okay? Strawberry venti refresher, and I like getting a warm banana bread, okay? Warm banana bread, that's my thing, okay? All right, so, so, so I'm in the line the other day. It's a new guy. I clearly heard the Lord say, give him your hat. When I say clearly, when I say clearly, clear as day, and it was the last black sheep BS one I had. So in my head, I'm like, mm, this, nah, nah. So I reach in the back seat, and I had another hat just laying on the floor. I grabbed that one, like, I'm a blessing with this one. I hand, I said, man, I said, man, I'm a blessing with this hat, man. And then what he said. Man, thank you, man. The one you got on, cold on. I swear God was in the rearview mirror like, now what? I thought, I'll tell you what, man, give me that one back. He's like, all right. I said, man, here you go. I said, you get this one right here. He was like, bro, man, thank you, man. Like, what this mean? And I was like, well, it's black sheep. You know, it's like, we just redefining the narrative. All of us who are different, who, who've been called, set aside, consecrated to do something big. Like, it's here to the black sheep. We redefine. So he was like, man, then he goes on a six-minute conversation about everybody in his family who didn't believe in him. Yeah. Hear me when I say this. So now, three other people in the window just sitting there listening to him talk. And I'm like, well, bro, and I said, no, man, I got, I got you, man. I, said, I, said, I don't believe. Can I pray? I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I come back the next day, and the lady who's the manager says, hey, don't worry about it. Here's your, here's your refresher. Here's your bread. No. I was like, what? She's like, that, that's so-and-so, so-and-so. It's been a rough two weeks for him, yada, yada, yada. We ain't seen him play and smile that long. And the Holy Spirit says, had you not moved in faith, there would have been consequences. <laughs> to you, it was a hat. To him, it was an act. I, 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 Jesus, I, I got to stop. Six, com- our commitment to bring glory and honor to his name will automatically bring success to ours. Every millennial hear me when I say that because we wrestle with success. I'm going to say that again. Our commitment to bring glory and honor to his name will automatically bring success to ours. Many of us are failing because we want success first, then give him glory. No, give glory and honor to his name. Do that. All my athletes, before every game, pray. and say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Cover my body, cover my mind. You make a big play, do your swag, and just... Steph Curry, I don't care what nobody say. Ain't no way in the world he's supposed to be killing all these people who tower over him. Good as he... But to me, it's just something special about a brother who whoop you, then say, can I let y'all in on a secret? Something we do no matter where we go, no matter where we perform, no matter what. No, I don't, no, no. Pastor Mike, you can't. All glory to God. All glory to God. Seventh, you will be paid for your faithful actions. Y'all miss y'all shout. Serving the Lord going to pay off now. Let me, let me free you. Let me free you. We got to stop saying we're going to have a pie in the sky when we die. Lord, give me something sound on the ground while I'm still around. Bars. There was bars right there, boy. Bars. Serving the Lord pays off. It pays off. Don't laugh. I got me a free venti strawberry refresher. Y'all laughing, but if you can't shout over the refresher, <laughs> serving the Lord pay off. It's Stella Award weekend. The first two Stellas I got, I gave away. 
I gave one to my parents and one to my pastor. One to my parents, one to my pastor. So when people say, Pastor Mike, you're doing all this stuff, them seeds coming back, bro. You know what I'm saying? Them seeds coming back, bro. Serving the Lord pays off. So, number one, I'm going to stop. Feed your faith. Number two, exercise your faith. I gave you seven ways to exercise your faith. I know this is a lot. We're going to unpack it this week. Number three, speak to your faith. Make it grow. Can everybody, can all my Apple, Apple Saints unlock your phone for me? Hold on one second, Rod. Is your phone unlocked? Hey, Siri! Speak to it. Just look at your phone. Say, hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. <laughs> I'm sorry, Android people. Hey, whoever on the other side of it. All you got to do is speak to it. We got this little TV, so Miles doesn't know how to spell. He's five. He's, he's learning. We got this little TV that when you hold a button, you can talk. To, I, I don't know if you talk to the remote or talk to the TV. Who know what I'm talking about? It's one of them. When I tell you, he gets on every nerve I got in my body. <laughs> Hear me? I'll be watching my TV shows. Or I'm not going to tell y'all what shows. Y'all may look at your pastor different. But I'll be watching my little TV shows or whatnot. Oh my God, I'll be watching my TV shows. Now all of a sudden, he just walks in. Play Roman Reigns. <laughs> what's the word he be saying? I can't, what's the name? Play Roman Reigns, Baptist, New Blood. Then he looks at me, acknowledge me. <laughs> I should have never showed him how to do it. Watch this. He can't spell. Don't know how to write his name fully. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, my bad, Doc. My bad. My bad. My bad, Doc. Well, he don't know how to spell. He know how to write his name. All right, so he can write Miles. That ain't a channel. The only way... He can see what his heart's desire. He has to speak it. Yeah. Can I free you? What you want to see? That scholarship? Speak it. That promotion? Healing in your body? Speak it. Your children whole? Speak it. Your family stronger? Speak it. Your finances out of here? Somebody ought to just take 30 seconds and speak those things that are not. Oh! Stand to your feet with me. All right, that's three. Speak to your faith. I know I'm being like an old pastor today. Stand up. Stand up. Don't leave. Nobody walk out. All right, hear me. So number three, speak to it, okay? You can look at 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, but we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believe in God, so I spoke. Look at this. Look at Corinthians referencing Psalms. I believed in God, so therefore I what? Spoke. Okay? Okay. 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 2 okay. Corinthians 4, 11 and 16. I'm going to give you context. Look what he says. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life. Look what he says right here. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believe in God, so I spoke. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to him together with you. All of this for your benefit. So I spoke to my faith. Number four. Free your faith from negativity. I want to be very clear, very clear. Please hear your pastor. It's very simplistic in nature. You got to remove yourself from negative conversations, man. You got to remove yourself from negative atmospheres. You may have to move into a one-bedroom apartment and figure it out yourself. But at a certain point, the atmosphere is going to get in you. 
I don't smoke weed or nothing like that, and I try my best to not be judgmental. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm ambivalent on my belief of certain things, you know. Uh, on one end, it comes from the earth. On another end, I think anything that can be abused is abused. On another end, I got four members right now who were prescribed it for medicinal purposes because they're dealing with certain things. So wherever you land on that, that's on you. I want to use it for an example. Um, there are a group of guys that I've been calling myself kind of talking to a lot more. And only thing that frustrates me about talking with them is when I leave from around them, I feel like it's on me. So, 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 so it's, I, I can't help when I, I get in the car, like, like I'll be in the car just praying. There are certain atmospheres that you can't help but get the residue of. To me, that's negativity. Hang on. You only going to be strong for so long. You know what I'm saying? Man, you ain't going to do that. Watch, watch, watch. Man, ain't nobody in the family ever did. Man, watch me, watch me. I'm telling you, man, nobody gonna help. Then the first time something go wrong, okay, you gonna pull on that. So do me a favor, feed your faith, starve your doubts. The word negative isn't even in the Bible for real. King James version of the Bible. However, when you think of the word negative, I'm reminded of the word doubt. So since we really don't see the word negativity in the Bible, let's replace it with doubt. So when it comes to faith, negativity equals doubt. F. F. Bosworth, the author of Christ the Healer, said, faith and doubt cannot live in the same house. Who's ever been cooking and some water got in your oil? What happened? Won't mix. Father, in the name of Jesus, give us the strength to consecrate ourselves, to make a vow or a promise to ourselves that here are the things I am pulling me out of so I can be better. God, I pray a special prayer that a couple friends, a couple brothers, a couple sisters will come together, a couple couples will come together and say, you know what? I want you to hold me accountable. I'm going to hold you accountable. I pray for those two or three friends who look at it right now saying, hey, we're going to do this. Because God helped them to understand that this is bigger than them. The deliverance of my crew, the security of my family, my future is too big to keep hoping things may happen or moving by happenstance. God, I pray in this moment that you will equip us for every good and perfect work you've called us to do. That we will stop putting it off. I'll pray when, I'll tithe when, I'll witness when, I'll evangelize when, I'll read my Bible when, God, we're going to do it now. Tomorrow starts a fresh day. Tomorrow is the beginning of a new season for us. God, I thank you for taking us back to the one. God, in the future, when we make the statement back to the one, it won't mean we're going back. It will be a calling card to remain at the one. But God, we set the groundwork for what you're getting ready to do in our lives. It is in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. Is that all right today? Amen. All right, so before you log off, before you leave, I just want to encourage you. This is an important week. I rarely say God said. I know without a shadow of a doubt the Lord was speaking to me on this one. Uh, even when it comes down to the name, back to the one, those of you who were here that day, it wasn't something we planned. It was something that kind of came out in the midst of worship, and we just went with it, and we felt like God breathed on that. So do me a favor. You can text WELCOME BACK. It's right there on your screen, WELCOME BACK, to 28950. We'll give you information on what we're doing this week. Don't forget this weekend, this Sunday at 11 a.m., we will be at the Boutwell Auditorium. Make sure you get there early. Get you a great seat. Um, you probably won't see us doing a whole lot of push, 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 pushing from my end, but maybe from the church, and they may ask me to do a little something. This is for us, man. Let's make sure we get in God's presence. Let's make sure we stay grounded. Let's make sure we're ready for what God is about to do. Who's crazy enough to believe that the best is still yet to come? Anybody? If you're giving today, you know how to give. You can text I Rock with the amount you wish to give to 28950. I'm a firm believer in giving. Uh, I had a guest with me on about two weeks ago, 
And he turned to Pastor James. He says, he's not going to raise the offering. And Pastor James told him, that's just not who he is. Like, he believes God's going to let people do what they're going to do. I believe that from the depths of my heart. One of the promises I made God is that I would never do this for stuff. So, man, your relationship with God, your prayer life is your relationship with God. Your giving is your relationship with God. Your living is your relationship with God. I made a decision in my life that you can be two things. You can be a tour guide or a travel agent. A travel agent sends people to a place that they will never go. Or a tour guide walks through the jungle with you to help you through life. I just want to be your tour guide and say, hey, here's how God's doing what he's doing in my life. I pray early. I pray often. I pray as much as I can. I go through seasons where I don't pray enough. And I'm trying to make sure I keep a regular devotion time in my life. When it comes to my giving, I believe in it. You can't beat God's giving. That ain't just a church saying. No matter how, there is no way on God's green earth a kid from Birmingham, Alabama with no major label, no major backing, no real connection, can be doing all the stuff that we're doing. It's just a favor of God, man. I believe that. And it's having good people in your life who's just always holding you down. So I believe in prayer. I believe in giving. Number three, I believe in repentance. And that's something I'm really finna do. The Holy Spirit put something on my heart six years ago that I buried that he's calling me to do called reconciliology. Reconciliology. It's the art of reconciling. I do not believe as a people of God, we apologize with the right heart. And for me, if I make a mistake, I'm going to be the first to say, hey, I miss God on that one. I repent. I apologize. I, I was wrong. And it ain't no but after it. But you know, I was wrong. How can I fix this? So when it comes to me, it's a three-prone approach, man. I'm going to pray and try to give God the first of all I got. I'm going to be a giver. And I'm going to do my best to try my best to repent in righteous moments so God can get the glory and people can get the healing that they need. So I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get back to the one. What about you? Anybody? Do me a favor as we get ready to go. If you're watching online, I love you so, so, so much. Continue to stay connected. Continue to stay committed. If you're sitting in overflow, thank you for being patient today. Thank you so, so, so much. Pastor Mike knows he should be having two and three services. But right now, I just feel God just saying, let's be in one place on one accord. Do what we do, and it'll help us. Father God, I pray a special prayer. Your will. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. I love you. I'll see you Sunday. God bless you. Wow. Yes, God. Come on now. Absolutely Woo. incredible experience. There is no place. Yeah. Quite like Rock, Rock City. City. That's right. If you're sitting at home right now, you say, you know what? After that experience, after that word, after that time in the presence of God, I believe I've received God as my Lord and yeah. Savior. Received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Do me a favor. Text HOME yeah. to 28950. Make your next move. Your best move. Your best move. Yeah. We are waiting to welcome you into our spiritual family. So listen, if today's the day you're giving your life to yeah. Christ, maybe rededicating your That's life right. to Christ, or maybe you've heard God say, you know what, this is this is my home. I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. I believe God. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for my sins, that he rose on the third day. Yeah. You already believe that. But you're looking for a place to plug into. Mm -hmm. You're looking for a place that you can call home. I believe you found that place here at Rock City. So text home to 28950. And if you're giving today, yeah. uh, there's multiple ways that you can do that. Multiple ways that you can do that. Um, this is truly good ground. Oh, yeah. Um, I think the reason why I've seen so much happen in my life mm -hmm. is by way of the seeds Absolutely. that I've been able to sow right here. Absolutely. Right. And so we just thank God for the fact that he gives seeds to the sower. That's word. And so That's don't word. hear a word. Don't don't experience something like yeah. that. And don't mark that word Absolutely. with the seed. Absolutely. Yeah. So listen, you can text I rock with the amount you wish to give to 28950. You can also log on to our website, yep. www.therockcity.org, or download our app. When you open it, you'll find giving options there as well. And don't forget, family, yes. registration yes. for Back to the One closes tonight, tonight at midnight. Tonight, yep. so listen, if you're coming, yep. let's go. You've got to register. It's absolutely free, but we do want you to register. Why? Because we're intentional yep. about getting into the presence of God. This is not about lights and mm -hmm. cameras and all that other stuff. No, this is an encounter conference. Yeah. This is about us journeying back into the presence of God through prayer, through yeah. worship. There's going to be prophecy, laying on of hands. Yeah. I believe that God is going to meet us in an incredible way. So text WELCOME BACK to 28950. Right. You can register to be a part 
of Back to the One. And tonight. Tonight is the night, y'all. The so biggest night in gospel. It's the biggest night in gospel. Absolutely. And we have two of our very own, a part of this move of God. Absolutely. And so we're so godly proud of our pastor. He took home six awards this year. One, I mean, two, three, I, yeah, I four, five. Hand. I mean, it's that so part, right? And so up. we want to be able to celebrate our man of God. So host your own watch party, yes. right? Tag PMJ Absolutely. on social media, yep. Rock City. Let's Blow show the whole world yep. what God is doing, what oh, yeah. God has birthed right here Absolutely. in Birmingham, along with our very own Dr. James Fortune. The good doctor. The good doctor. The good doctor who will be hitting the stage. So oh, yeah. let's let's celebrate them big time. Absolutely. Yep. Listen, that's tonight on yep. B. Yep. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure you choke, check your local listings. We yeah. don't want you to miss it. It's the biggest night in gospel. And we've got two of God's biggest and best right here at Rock City. We love you. Yes. We're praying for yeah. you. We will see you soon. In the yes. morning. In the morning. Devo Energy. De wait. Get you out right. the way. Ah, Devo Energy. Yes. 721 YouTube. Facebook, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, be sure you do it right now. We'll see you in the morning. Peace.